Welcome to The Log Church. I'm Pastor Luke, and we are super excited that you decided to join us today. And if you're new to The Log Church, please let us know by filling out one of our online connection cards at logchurchpa.org and pick on the I'm New tab. You can also text the word GUEST to 412-538-6688. We'd like to send you a gift and some information about the church to help you get better connected. Also, we want to let you know we're going to be doing a virtual communion later on in the service. Make sure that you have something to represent the body and the blood. I'll be using a piece of bread and a small glass of water. Now, it's time to worship. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know
one God. Come on, say, I believe. some great praise for our great God this morning. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. You guys can take a seat. Thank you again for being with us. For those of you who are used to giving during our typical weekend service, we ask that you consider giving online. And as a reminder, you can give online anytime securely at logchurchpa.org and pick on the give tab. Now we will partake in communion. Communion is a time when we remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. His broken body, His shed blood for the remission of all of our sins. Use this time now to examine your heart and mind for those things that are keeping you separated from Him and focus on how you can draw closer in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And He took the bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is poured out for you. It is a new covenant in my blood. Please join me as we open in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we just thank you for today and we thank you for this communion table and all the things that it represents. That opportunity to just have eternity with you because of the sacrifices that you made for us. Lord, we just now ask that you just clear our minds and clear our hearts of all of the craziness that's happening in our lives and in our community and in this world. Help us to focus on you. Help us to focus on the message that our pastor has for each and every one of us today. Speak through him to us. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you and love you for everything that you do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome everyone to our worship service here today. And this week, this is our third week here on the subject matter of the ant and the grasshopper. Now, I know that sounds like a really strange title. Normally, I call this the path. Now, I do want you to be on the path where God wants you to be, but I want you to be the ant and I don't want you to be the grasshopper. Okay, so here's the story of the ant and the grasshopper. So the ant is working really hard during the summer and the grasshopper's making fun of him and he thinks he's really like a fool. But when the winter comes, the ant is ready. The anthill is ready. He has food and comfort and the grasshopper is out there in the snow. Well, the grasshopper gets really upset. So he goes running to the liberal news. Okay, he goes CNN News and CBS, and he goes, you know, this isn't fair, and the news media comes, they come with cameras, and they take pictures. I mean, they're really shaming the ant. And, and then uh, Kermit uh, the Frog, he gets involved, and he goes on The View. I know some of you watch it. I, I hope you don't, but I know some of you do. So he goes on The View, and he tells him, he goes, that ant, he got rich off the poor grasshopper's backs. I mean, he just like abused them and everything. Oh, everybody, all those women, they get all upset. They get, they get all the other insects, all those bugs out there. They get them upset. Okay, so they're revolting and demonstrating. Okay, so the government gets involved, and they go, and they start finding the ant, and they start, they, they start putting tax hikes on his really rich ant hill. So finally, he can't pay all these bills and everything, and it's confiscated, and the poor ant goes off in the wilderness with nothing. But don't worry, the ant will rebuild his life. Okay, so the grasshopper now takes over the ant hill, him and his grasshopper friends, and they eat up all his food and everything, and they, you know, they're staying there at the, at the ant hill until the ant hill totally falls apart because they don't take care of it. And then one day, we see on a news clip, 
the poor grasshoppers had frozen to death, starving in the snow. That's a big surprise, isn't it? Okay, so you want to be the ant, and you don't want to be the grasshopper. Okay, today I want to talk about working the plan. We've been talking about a plan, but plans do not work unless you work. Listen, you can't wish this into existence. Now, last week, I was talking about speaking it into existence, and that's the power behind the work. You have to work it. So let's look at our first word. We're going to look at work here. And uh, work, I'm, I want to go to the ants. So let's go to Proverbs uh, chapter 6, verse 6. He says, now go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider, sluggard's that lazy person. Consider her ways and be wise. Listen, they, they, they don't have a chief, they don't have an officer or a ruler. She prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Meaning, there's a season for hard work. There's a season to bring in the harvest. There is a season to, re, re, uh, to relax and to rejoice. And we want to be like the ant. You know, one time I was planting these gigantic sunflowers. They grew up to like 10 foot tall. And so I had these big seeds. So I had them on a deck with me and I got them all ready to go. For 10 minutes, I went off to do something when I came back. And all the seeds were gone. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was like, where are my seeds? And then I saw off in the distance, no joke, a trail of ants got my seeds. I mean, they were charging. They were running with these seeds. So I followed where they were going. And they came to a hole in the ground, like their anthill. And, but they, the seed was so big, they couldn't get it in the anthill. I thought that was funny. And I stole back all my seeds. I was like, go find something else to eat, you know? So, uh, but they are very, very hard workers. Listen, if you want to obtain your dream, if you want to get things done, 2021, you have the plan, but now you got to work. You have to take responsibility for your life to happen. This, this is what I don't want you to do. Look, look at this. This is big. You want to jot this down. Don't spend half your life telling people what you're going to do. Then the other half explaining why you didn't do it. Okay, I know every one of us have heard someone going on and on. Well, you know, I had these big plans, and they blame their spouse, and they blame their parents, and, you know, they blame they couldn't go to school. We find all sorts of excuses why we didn't do it. Okay, now I'm going to say something really strong here. I can get away with this because I'm not a politician. In our society, we have a lot of, a, a lot of tramps, bums, and freeloaders. Now, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. I'm not running for public office. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not working for the Republicans or the Democrats right now. We've we got to worry about pleasing the crowd. My job is to instruct you from the Word of God of what is true. And, and you know what? I, I just want to warn some of you. Uh, some of us uh, work really hard, and, but then you'll look at people that don't work. And for some reason, you excuse that. Okay, there's no excuse, uh, unless, of course, they're disabled or something like that. Um, it reminds me of this uh, beggar. He's along the street, and so he had, he had this sign, and the sign said he had these dark sunglasses on, and he said, uh, please give to a poor blind beggar. So this guy's going by and feels kind of bad, and he dropped the quarter in his tin cup. I guess if you're going to drop a quarter, I guess you don't feel that bad. But okay, but he feels bad. He gives money. Well, as he's walking down the street, he had a sneaky suspicion. He turned, and when he turned to look at the blind beggar, he saw him take off his glasses, and he looked in the cup to see how much money was there. Well, the guy goes running back. He goes, you're not blind. You're not a blind beggar. And the guy said, beggar said, well, no, I'm, I'm not the blind beggar. He said, the blind beggar is on vacation right now. I'm just covering for him. He said, I am the deaf and dumb beggar that works two streets away. <laughs> you better watch what you do there. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't give to people that are in need, but I'm here to tell you that everybody's to work. You know, off the coast of California, a fishing business was uh, working along a dock, a true story, and they were taking all these fish, and they were taking the remains of the fish and throwing them to the pelicans. So all these pelicans, hundreds of them, every day for some years were eating all the fish. Well, one day the business came to the end and the pelicans kept coming. Well, you see, they had domesticated 
the Pelicans' existence. And guess what? The Pelicans were starving to death. Why? They didn't know how to fish. You see, when you just like give to people, when you just give to kids, we just keep giving to society, they never learn to work. We have to learn to work. We have to teach our children how to work. Now, look at me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Do you see that in the Bible? You say, oh, Pastor Mike, don't bring out that Bible Old Testament law. Uh, no, we're not under law here. And this isn't the law. This is the New Testament filled with grace. Listen, the Bible says that we're to be held responsible. Now, the problem we're having today is this. Everybody has a right and nobody has a responsibility. Isn't that true? So all these people out there yelling, screaming for their rights. Look at now what the Bible says in Proverbs 26, verse 14. As the door turns upon its hinges, so doth the sluggard or the lazy person upon his bed. Now, some of you, this reminds you of your children, doesn't it? Some of you have a son or a daughter at home. They lay around all the time. They might be teenagers. They might be a young adult. You have to go in their bedroom a couple times a week and turn them into bed so they don't get bed sores. And, uh, but listen, the Bible says that we're, we are not going to be blessed if we do not work and we don't come out of that laziness. And, and, and some parents teach your children the wrong lessons. You know, some of you guys, I know you come home and you're just so tired from a day of work and you lay on the couch and you lay watching TV and your kids come home and this is what they see. See dad in the recliner sleeping for an hour. Saturday, you know, he sleeps into one o'clock in the afternoon. Listen, you could be a couch potato but if you do, you're going to raise little teeter tots in your house, okay? And they're going to follow you, and they're going to follow that example. And you just don't want that because they're not going to be blessed. Now, some of us, this poem kind of sums up our lives. This could be put on your tombstone. He slept beneath the moon. He laid beneath the sun. He lived a life of going to do. Oh, but he died with nothing done. Okay, let, let's look. We're looking at very, very important words. Uh, one of the words I want to take a, a look at here is sacrifice. Second word is going to be sacrifice. And, and as we look at the word, let's go over here to Proverbs down in 14, verse 23. In all toil and all work, there is profit. But mere talk, just talk, talk, it tends only to poverty. You know, we're always talking about what we're going to do. We're talking about the future, the future plans. But you don't have a plan. Let me tell you, a man without a plan is not a man. Now, when you make your plan, you do it by faith. And just so you know, Pastor Sam, uh, he is bringing next week, and he's talking about how faith comes into this, how you work faith into your plans. So there's going to be gaps in your plans, and you're not sure how to get through that, but you know it's God's will that this is what you're supposed to do, and God will fill in the gaps. Now look with me, Proverbs 28, verse 19. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread. Oh, but he who follows, watch this, worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. You know, you know one of the problems we have, some people just never grow up. I, I mean that. Some, some people are 40 years old. It's like you're 20 years old. Uh, we, we become adults, we get married, we get in our careers, we have children, and we're still playing children's games. I, I, I talked to one guy, he's, work, he's playing on two sports teams, he's over 30 years of age, he's got three kids, buddy, it's over, and I mean that, okay? And you say, well, he seems to be pulling it off, yeah, he's not paying his bills, his wife's not happy. He's not spending time with his kids. Listen, life's tough. You, sometimes you just have to grow up and realize that I got to give up some worthless pursuits. Now, some of you, I know you enjoy sports and that's good, but you ought not to be consumed with hours and hours and hours of sports or golfing or whatever it may be, boating and camping. Listen, those are all good things when they're done in the right percentage of your time, and they cannot consume your life. Now, I, so what you got to do, you have to have a little talk with yourself. So what is it you want to do? 
Okay, so when you talk to yourself, you have to say to yourself, am I willing to pay the price? Because everything has a price tag. Uh, life is like a big buffet. And you can go along and put anything on your plate that you want. Okay, but you have to pay for it when you get to the cash register, right? So you have to say, is this worth the sacrifice? Is this worth my time? Am I willing to put the work into it that I have to? Okay, now let, let me add one more thing on. Is it possible to have it all? Is it possible to work nine to five, have Monday through Friday every evening free, uh, have every weekend off? I'm going to say for 98% of us, no. Now, remember I was young. I had all these children. So I, I worked my main job and I worked another job. We had so many children. It was worth my wife staying at home with the children. Okay, and I, then I would look at other families, and I go, wow, that guy's wife, she works full-time and everything. And I thought, that looks so much easier. But you know what? That's not easier. They're, they're both hard. So he works, and she works, and they have babysitting, or they have daycare. Or he works one shift, and she works a later, later shift, and they don't hardly see each other. Life is just really hard. So you, no, you, I mean, I'd like to tell you, you have every evening free you could be all your children's functions at school, and you could be at all the sporting events and never miss any family uh, get-togethers, but that's not true. There's a price to pay to the things that you need to do. Okay, let's look at the third word. The third wor word is endurance. Now I'm, now, I'm here to tell you, and Pastor Sam's going to talk about this next week, this is where people fail. If you make it through the other ones, endurance is the toughest, and I mean that. Staying on a path and not getting off that path. Being married to one person and saying, well, they're not perfect, but I'll just keep them anyhow. <laughs> just say, listen, those teenagers, it is so easy and tempting just to say yes to the child because you're getting tired. Isn't that true? More kids you have, more tired you get with the younger ones. Listen, don't give in. Don't give in. You just do the right thing. You need endurance. Now, as we're looking here about endurance, I, I want us to go down to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. He says, now, your work. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans. Do you see that? So you have your plans, and now you commit your work to the Lord. You can't do it alone. I need God to empower me and to give me the strength to do that work. Look here. And your plans will be established. It's saying that God is going to bring things to come to pass, but I'm here to tell you, ready? I want you to hear this. You can't relax. You can't let up. I want you to get that thing out of your mind where you think to yourself, oh, you know, when that day comes, I'm not going to do anything anymore. I can't wait till the day comes that I could be like so-and-so, and I don't have to run around and work, and I could just lay around and nap anytime I want. I got some news for you. Did you know that 200,000 people die every year from DBT? Do you know what DBT is? That's a blood clot that normally you get in your leg, and then it goes to your lungs, and it kills you. You know why most people get DBTs? It's the leisure clot. You know what the leisure clot is? The leisure clot is that person who's sitting around most of the day, laying around most of the day. You used do you know why so many people stroke out and have heart attacks after they leave their jobs? That was the only exercise they were getting. They're up on their feet all day. They're at the store. They're at the mill. They're at the office, running here, running there. And then they retire to nothing. A lot of people retire to something, which is good. But they retire to nothing, a life of leisure. And then they get a DBT. Okay, you don't want that. You don't want the leisure clot. You don't really want to do that. Look. But let's talk about endurance, because here's another thing I find people, as they get older, they lose their edge. I, I, one guy called me up one day. A shingle blew off his roof. Oh, he's falling apart. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, he's talking to me. I've got like six missing off mine, you know? Okay, I knew that guy. He used to be tough. He used to be rough. He handled a lot. He trusted in the Lord. But he went into this life of leisure, and now he can't handle little simple things. Isn't that true? Very, very sad. A test of a man's character before God. What does it take?
gag, get him to quit. For some of you that are listening to me right now, it didn't take much. But that's why you're not blessed, and you want to be blessed. L listen, when you're doing what God has called you to do, you have to say to yourself, no matter what happens, there's no reservations, there's no hesitation, there is no desertion. I'm going to stay on this path. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. I'm going to pay those bills off. I'm going to lose that weight. This is it, 2021. I'm sick and tired of being 50 pounds overweight. I'm sick and tired of feeling like I'm carrying some other guy on my back. I'm just sick and tired of being tired of the. Listen, you know, when you don't take care of yourself, you have no energy. So I want my energy back. I want the eye of the tiger back. Some of you have lost the eye of the tiger. I want you to get it back. Listen, I want to encourage you to get back. Listen, I know I'm being hard on you today, but some of you, your mama and daddies aren't here anymore, and you need somebody to come and slap you. Remember the Three Stooges? Take their head and take it up and go boom, 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 boom. <laughs> That's what you need right now. That's why I'm here. Holy Spirit wants me to do that to you because, listen, I want you to get your character back. I want you to get your toughness back. This is what I want you to do. I want you to hold yourself more responsible than what anybody expects of you. I want you to say, I'm not going to excuse myself. I'm not going to pity myself. But I'm going to be hard on myself. But I'm going to be very gracious. And I'm going to be real lenient to everybody else around me. That's what a Christian does, okay? Don't you be judgmental about other people. How they work. I want you to look at yourself. Hey, one thing I learned a long time ago. You come to two paths in the woods. And you see this one path, oh, it's just beautiful, it has flowers on it. And it kind of goes down here, hill on a beautiful path, but you don't know where that goes, but that's where most people are going. But you know that on this other path, at the top is where the fruit is, at the top is where the blessings are, and it's a real rough path, and there's thorns in the way, and it's rugged and rocks. That's the path you want to take. I took the path that was less traveled, and that made all the distance. Uh, somebody wrote, somebody said it couldn't be done, but he, with a chuckle, replied that maybe it couldn't, but I, he would be one that wouldn't say so, do he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin. On his face, if he worried, he hit it. He started to sing as he tackled that thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Uh, somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. Nobody has ever done it. He took off his coat, he took off his hat, and the first thing we knew, he'd begun it. With a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled that thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Oh, there are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go do it. Just start to sing as you tackle that thing that couldn't be done, and you'll do it in 2021. I want to encourage you to do that. No, look, look with me over here in uh, John chapter 9, verse 4. We must work the works of him that sent me while it's, it is day. I have something to tell you. My son who recently passed, you, you know, he did his chores. He lived for God. He served him till his very last breath. I knew he was a little worried about me because it was our second son that we had lost. Before he died, I, he would grab my arm and he'd say, now, Dad, you're going to be okay, right? You're still going to do God's work. You're still going to build that church. I said, I am. I, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. About 30 days after he died, there was a video sent to me. I didn't know what it was. And when I pushed the button, it was Randy. It was on the video. And he goes, hey, Dad, yeah, it's me, and I'm dead. But you better get back to work. I'm telling you, Dad, right now, you better build that church. Oh, he just slammed me for about five minutes. My friend, let me tell you, you don't want to die until you're dead, right? I want you to get back to work. If my son could do it, I can do it. If I can get back to work, you can get back to work. I don't want to hear how sick you are, and I don't want to hear. I don't want, listen, I'm sorry about that, and I don't care how old you are. <laughs> do, do your work on the phone, whatever you got to do. Listen, I would rather burn out than rust out. Okay? I want to die with my boots on. And the number one thing you ought to do is to honor and serve God and glorify Him to your very last breath. And I think some of you have just lost some hope. 
Hey, let me tell you, when the sun goes down and it gets dark, that's when all the stars come out. Don't lose hope. I want you to get to work. Now let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed for prayer. If you're a Christian, I want you to commit your work to God. I, I want you to repent to him if you haven't been doing it and tell him you're going to do it. Now, if you're not sure where you would spend eternity, you can't work your way to heaven. It's a free gift. And I'm going to pray with you if you want to trust in Christ with me right now. Just pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, that you did all my work, that you died on the cross. I believe with all my heart that you paid for all my sins with your own blood. I believe you were resurrected from the grave. And right now, at this moment, I ask for forgiveness of all of my sins. I trust in you as my Lord and my Savior. And I ask you to save me right now at this moment. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for anybody who just prayed that prayer. I also pray for all Christians, Father. I pray that as we commit our plans, as we are in your will, as we commit our work to you, that you are going to bring a miracle to pass in our lives. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Log Church. Let's talk about some information and announcements. We have a brand new program called Starting Point that we think you might be interested in. This will be four one-hour classes starting in February. Check out this video for more information. Let's be honest. Conversations about faith are usually off limits. It's gotten to the point where the church can be the last place you would think to have a conversation about God. But we want to change that. Starting Point is a place where no questions or discussions are off limits. It's not about a teacher giving you information. It's about a conversation. It's about being with other people like you. And we really mean that. You're free to ask any question you want. This is your opportunity to explore faith freely. It's not another place where people will talk at you. We want to talk with you. So are you curious about God, Jesus, the Bible, or Christianity? Or did you recently begin a relationship with Jesus? Or have you returned to church after some time away? Starting Point is for you. Every Starting Point group is guided by qualified leaders, but your voice matters to the group. Your thoughts add value. You may even ask the question that someone else is afraid to ask. Starting Point, where your questions about God turn into a conversation about faith. If you're interested, please text the word POINT to 412-538-6688 and someone will reach out to you with more details. If you have kids pre-K through fifth grade, we wanted to let you know that we have children's services for every service down at the children's wing down at the cafe. If you're with us in church right now or down at the cafe, this would be a great time to walk your kids down and drop them off. We're also really excited to let you know that we're offering all of our regularly scheduled services in person at the church and cafe, Saturdays at 6 and Sundays at 8.45, 9.45 and 11. All activities during the 945 service down at the cafe will require a mask. This includes not only the church service, but all of the children's ministries as well. Essentially, if you're at the cafe between 945 and 1045, you will be required to wear a mask. Thank you everyone. Have an amazing weekend.